Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Big Country and thank you for clicking the video. Today we're going to talk about my feelings about Fortnite Chapter 2, Season 2, and what I'm looking forward to in Chapter 2, Season 3. But before we get started, if you enjoy the video, please click the like button and feel free to look around the channel and if you enjoy any other videos, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to go even further, you can use code COUNTRY in the Fortnite item shop. Alright, for starters, let's talk about the Battle Pass for Chapter 2, Season 2 in Fortnite. This season's theme was Top Secret. The Battle Pass cost 950 V-Bucks, which it cost $10 in the item shop to buy 1k V-Bucks. But after you get to a level 100 of the Battle Pass, in total you will have received 1500 V-Bucks back. So basically, Epic is paying you an additional 550 V-Bucks to buy the Battle Pass initially. Not to mention everything else that you get that's included along the journey of getting to level 100. You get 7 emotes, 12 loading screens, 5 contrails, 7 back blings, 6 weapon wraps, 3 music tracks, 6 emoticons, 8 banner items, seven sprays, seven pickaxes or harvesting tools, seven gliders, and you get seven agents. Again, also during that mix you get 1500 V-Bucks. Now the agents included in this season's battle pass is for the, the first one is the first time ever we got a fully customizable skin in Maya. You also got Agent Peely, Agent Brutus, Meowsles, Tiantina, Sky, and Midas. You also get challenges with each of these agents so you can unlock alternate styles for each of them. Not to mention all the gold variants. Now the gold skins and the XP margins are pretty pretty far after you get higher up in rank. So starting off with Midas, you unlock Midas at level 100 and you can start getting him gold right away. Now to get him completely gold you have to get to level 140. Level 140 gets him completely gold and also unlocks Brutus. Then you gotta get to level 180 to get Brutus completely gold, but that also unlocks Meowsles. Then level 220 gets Meowsles completed gold, but unlocks Tiantina. Then level 260 gets her completely gold and unlocks Sky. And then when you get to level 300, you have Sky that's completely gold, and then you get the option to start or rake it up to unlock the Golden Peely. Well, Golden Peely is unlocked. You just got to get him fully gold. Now, here's where I'm confused. It took 40 levels for every other one to become fully gold. But Golden Peely takes 50. You have to get to level 350 to fully, completely cover Agent Peely in gold. And you're at that level. It takes 100k plus XP to go up one level. Now these ep these XP margins were huge. Now Epic knew this, so that along with the world crisis going on, they did extend the season by like a month. Now during which time they had been adding XP challenges to help us get to that level 350. Now in case we run out of time, there's also to be rumored that there will be purchasable, purchasable XP in the item shop. And remember, use code Country. Now, I'll probably never use the Peely skin just because I don't like it, but I do want to make sure I can get everything the Battle Pass for Chapter 2, Season 2 has to offer. I've put my money into it, i put my time into it, so I want to make sure I get rewarded everything. Now, there was also five different locations added to the map for each of the five main agents. The Yacht, which was for Meowsles, and he has a Mythic AK. The Rig for Tiantina with her mythic Boombo. The Grotto for Brutus and his mythic Minigun. The Shark for Sky and her mythic Grappler and mythic Scar. She is the only one that has two mythic items if you go kill her. And of course the Agency with Midas and his mythic Drum Gun. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We can't forget about Deadpool. I damn near forgot about Deadpool. With the partnership with Marvel and the challenges that came with Deadpool for 10 weeks, 9 weeks, 10 weeks, we were able to get a bunch of Deadpool items such as his dual sword back bling, weapon skins, 
loading screens and two different variants of Deadpool. You got the unmasked variant and the uh, the white variant. I'm not sure. I don't remember the name, the official name of the white variant, but you got three versions of Deadpool. Not to mention, <laughs> Deadpool did go to the yacht and kick off Meowsles and kicked him over to the box factory, crying his eyes out. Literally, you go to the box factory, and if you haven't seen it, hide somewhere so he don't see you. You'll you'll see and hear him crying. And in the meanwhile, Deadpool didn't turn the yacht into a party yacht. <laughs> But if you do go to the yacht and you kill Deadpool, you now get his mythic dual pistols. I don't want to call them dual cannons because they are Garbo. The only thing going for these dual pistols is you get some sort of, you get, get a little bit of a siphon out of them. Meaning when you cause damage to an opponent, you get some health or shield from them. Now you can still go over to Meowsel at the box factory. You can kill him and take his mythic AK, but hasn't the poor cat been through enough already? I mean, leave the poor cat alone, will you? And don't forget the Marvel packs that came out in the item shop. I, of course, I bought the whole pack. I bought, I bought everything Marvel, everything Deadpool this season. Uh, again, like I said, I have invested my time and money into this game, so I want to make sure I get everything out of it. Now, the single best live event we've had in Fortnite since the beginning of Fortnite is without a doubt the Travis Scott event. That was... I'll say it again, the best event ever. I, I just loved it. I mean, I still have my recording and I watch it from time to time because it was just so good. So good. And now they've also been doing a mode called Party Royale. Uh, a game mode that you can't harm anyone. You don't, you don't fight, you don't have pickaxes, you don't farm, you don't, you, you do nothing but go in there and explore. Uh, it's just a fun place to chill with friends you can do time trial courses, whether it be on the, the four-wheeler, you can do glider courses. You can also set world records, world record times while doing these courses to challenge yourself, see if you can hold a world record for that long. And if you can't, someone beats you, go back and beat them again. You can even watch live shows on the main stage. So far, we've had two live DJ events. I did attend the first event. It was a test event, but I was unable to catch the second. But I did, however, was able to log in during that weekend so I could claim my free Neon Wings backlink. Now, it's cool for those who want to play Fortnite but not have to play Battle Royale. You don't want to go full sweat. You just want to go in and, and chill in the game environment, but uh, you just don't want to go kill nobody. Go into Battle Ro uh, Party Royale. There's tons of stuff to do there, and it's very colorful. Now, regardless of how you feel about Party Royale, with the live events that Fortnite has done and will be doing on this platform in the future, you can't tell me that Fortnite isn't the pioneer of modern gaming. No one else does live events in game. Not yet, anyway. Now, Save the World was supposed to have been free sometime this year, but who knows when the hell that's going to happen, so... Battle Royale has gone through some difficult times this season with skill-based matchmaking. All the top content creators kept bitching that the game was just too hard. <laughs> you believe that shit? Oh my god. I mean, you got people always talking about, it's just too hard, it's too sweaty, this is not competitive, this is a normal relaxed atmosphere. Let me get in here with some bots so I can box him up, throw a trap on him or, or whatever. And It should not be that easy. In, in a public game to where you can just take advantage of someone. I guess some people would call that a, a, a form of bullying. You know what I mean? Keeping someone in a box, not letting them out. Every time they try to do something, you would quickly counter it. Now, do that at your own skill level. Don't have someone whose very first game or first couple of games is in a match with you and they wind up surviving to the end whether they hit in the bush or whatever. And you get to just toy with them like a cat and a mouse. Do it at a higher skill level. Get better at the game. That's my opinion on that. But 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 what did Epic do? They removed skill-based matchmaking in squads. Now at the beginning, all the crying and bitching creators were happy again. Hell, even myself. I will say I enjoyed getting higher kill numbers numbers than I normally do. Even though they were bots, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. And then. Uh, these top content creators started bitching about because there was too many 
bots. Now, I kind of get, I get, you don't want, like for me, it was fun at first. Killing a bunch of bots, getting higher numbers, getting some Vic Roy's. Cool, it was fun. And after a while, you know, it just, it's too, it's too easy. But one of those top content creators, Cypher PK, he uploaded the video about with one of his discussions talking about how he had games to where there was only 11 real players in his match. Now, how did he find this out, mind you? One of his followers, apparently is a coder, they created a program to where he could scan his game files and actually see who was in his matches. And the results of those scans were that there were times to where he had as many as 30 players, real human players, and as few as 11 human players in his games and the rest were all bots. Now, I'm not sure why Epic decided that adding bots to experienced players' lobbies was a good idea to begin with. I mean, it's not like lobbies will not fill up with real people. This is the most popular game in the world. Battle Royale, I, was, I won't clarify. It's the most popular, probably the most played Battle Royale game in the world. So it's not like real people are not playing. Now, I do understand that new players should have a bot full of lobbies for a, you know for a while until they their skill develops and they get used to the game i get that i do get it trust me but there needs to be a balance somewhere maybe you have like two instead of having a battle royale and boom everybody's thrown into one pool have like there's some games that'll ask you what is your skill level in this genre of game like uh, when you go play um any moba They'll ask you, how experienced are you with a massive online battle arena? Beginner, novice, or expert? And then by clicking one of those options, it will put you in your appropriate area so you can either A, learn, or just B, C, jump in there and start killing people. So Battle Royale, I know the coding might be a little difficult, um, Fortnite, but you know, I love you. And, and all I can say is if you don't have the, uh, personnel that can actually do that coding right now then go ahead head somebody from blizzard or league riot or somewhere uh, there's people out there who can do that and do it well so cypher's video went out and then shortly after epic secretly did some changes to that removal of skill-based matchmaking now i say secretly because there hasn't been an official announcement from epic yet but we as players can right away know the difference tell the difference myself i was thinking to myself like something happened here because you know you go out you're, you've been used for about a week or so you've been used to go killing a bunch of bots and all of a sudden you got a bot cranking 90s on you and you're not expecting it so yeah i, I noticed it myself that i started seeing people on twitter post things about it like do y'all feel something different about squads and skill you know what i mean so the word started getting out people started understanding yeah epic did something but epic never announced anything officially but <laughs> Twitter and social media is a powerful tool. Shortly after this happened, Cypher PK started trending on Twitter worldwide and not in the way that someone would want to be trending on Twitter worldwide. The hashtag F Cypher was trending for a while. There was kids saying, you ruined my game. I uninstalled because you broke the game. You made Epic revert stuff, and now I have no boss to kill, so I'm just going to uninstall. A couple of them were even, <laughs> one of them even said, dude, you ruined my chances with signing with so-and-so, whatever organization they wanted, because now, <laughs> because now he's got to go against real players. What the hell org is going to sign you to begin with if all you can kill is bots? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. And there's kids talking about how they can't do trick shots now because they don't get bots at endgame anymore. Like, come on, people. If you were really that good to begin with, one, you'd be signed with an org. Two, you'd be signed with a pro team. Or three, you can land a trick, stop, trick shot on a real person. So stop blaming someone for putting a video out and having Epic reconsider the changes that they made and tweak them somewhat, all right? You can't blame anybody else but yourself. But I want to know from you. I want to hear from you guys. How do you feel about the tweak of skill-based matchmaking down in the comments below? Do you think it's, now that it's more of a balance of people versus bots, do you think it's more enjoyable experience now? Or did you or did you enjoy having full lobbies full of bots? I mean, I, I really want to know. 
I really want. Granted, yeah, it's fun getting a bunch of kills, but for me, I want to get better. And the only way for me to get better at the game is to go against just some real humans. <laughs> you know, I got to go against humans um, so I can see what they do against me and how they counter me or if I can counter them. That's the only way to get better. And I, I'm not going in the creative. I might go into creative to do like a little warm up track, but when it comes to the actual gameplay, I'm not going to be a creative warrior. It's not going to happen. I, I need real life experience, uh, real game experience, and that's just me. That's the way I'm going to do it. Now, there is a big end of season event coming up. The Doomsday event should be happening within the next two to three weeks. Chapter two, season three is set to launch. The last date that I heard was June 4th. I'm not sure if that's changed, been pushed back or not. So the chapter two, season two, season ending event should be happening soon now we don't really know much about it yet i mean we have a lot of speculation we got a lot of the leakers out there that's saying this is going to happen but nobody can confirm anything but this week's 12.60 update should have a lot of information in there should be a huge update and we should either have that early tuesday morning or early wednesday morning so my overall feelings on chapter two season three i absolutely loved it i have enjoyed this season so much i have gone all in i put a lot of time and a lot of money into this season i, I absolutely freaking love it now i stopped playing back in around season four and i just got back into fortnite towards the uh towards the end of chapter two season one and i started liking it again and then this season started and i've been it from the beginning i've absolutely loved it i've loved it so um, yeah, that's me personally. So let me know what you thought about this season in the comments below. Have you enjoyed it as much as me? How far are you? What level are you? Because currently right now I'm level 270. 80 levels to go to unlock Golden Peely. But I am excited for season three. There's a lot of uh, rumors out there. A lot of people thinking that we're going to have it under uh, like a water world. Now, I'm not too excited about having a complete water world. Some water area, fine. But it's hard to move in water, man. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but I am excited to see how season three is gonna be. So with that said, I will be giving away some chapter two, season three, Fortnite battle passes when season three starts. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the video of how to enter in the contest so you can get yourself a free battle pass. Well, that's it. That's my overall thoughts and everything about chapter two, season two for Fortnite. Let me know everything you, you let me know how you feel in the comments about what I've said, if you agree or disagree. So thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, give the video a like. If you really liked it, then hit that subscribe button. And if you want to go a step further, use code country in the Fortnite item shop. I'll see all of you on the next video.